We've got the Mini Countryman plug-in hybrid in British racing green. What color are those pants? British racing green? I knew I could find something in my closet. Pure EV mode. Enjoy it while it's it lasts. It's got some good power. Enjoy it while I it like lasts. It. All right, what's under the hood of this thing? A 1.5 liter turbocharged three cylinder with a six speed automatic transmission. It has a 10 kilowatt hour battery and a combined 221 horsepower and 284 pound feet of torque. Standard all wheel drive and the range 29 kilometers, 17 miles. Not a lot. I could walk that, Andrea. Bit of a long walk. But it I could, would be a bit of a long walk, but, but it would be it. nice to see more range yes. in this. I think that's a theme you'll get yeah. throughout this video that this is a fine product, but it needs more range. Mm -hmm. Please watch the rest. <laughs> All right, what do you get with this? This is a mini, one of the key standard features. The base trim comes with an 8.8 .8 inch touchscreen, six way manual front seats, a six speaker audio system, power door locks and windows power side mirrors, push button start, LED headlights and LED taillights, 18 inch wheels with run flat tires. There are so many toggles and switches in this. It's so configurable, all this EV stuff. Yeah. But what toggle and switch are we gonna use? You gotta put it in S for subscribe and if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. Make sure you like and subscribe. Most important thing is to hit the notification bell, but also follow on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to get a sneak peek behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore score auto and the links are below the like button. This video is brought to you by Canada Drives. Shop online for your next used vehicle and enjoy the convenience of to your door delivery and the confidence of a seven day love it or return it guarantee. Visit canadadrives.ca to learn more. So I think that this is the most fun I have ever had with a plug-in hybrid. It just handles so well. It's a blast to drive. It offers all of these different drive modes and e-modes, and we're gonna get into that in a second. So how does this all come together? A 1.5 liter three cylinder turbo that they've been using in the Mini family over many years. Uh, so that is the gasoline component. The yeah. electric component is actually a separate motor at the back. So when you have it in pure EV, you're actually just rear wheel drive. So this is an all wheel drive mini. It says all four down the side, yeah. but really if you're driving in pure EV mode, it's just two wheel drive and it's rear wheel drive. Yeah. And then there's other modes as well. So let's get into it. There are three drive modes, green, which is going to be your most fuel efficient mid, which mini says is just a comfortable everyday drive mode. And then sport where you get that instant acceleration and a tighter steering feel. Um, I like that a lot. Everything just lights up red in here when you use it. Obviously not as fuel efficient. Now there's also E-mode. So you've got max E-mode, which is what we have it in now, combined with green mode. That will be your I'm most confused. fuel Holy efficient. Holy moly, could they make this more confusing? I know. So that will be your most fuel efficient mode. And as Zach said, that is a rear wheel drive vehicle. Now, if you are- Oh, in there's slip, more. Yeah, if you're in slippery conditions or you need that extra traction, the all wheel drive system will come on. It doesn't matter what mode so you're what in. So what you're basically saying, if you want the traction, the front wheels will start to work. That's so right. So this is my whole thing about this. It's really a rear wheel drive in EV mode. Mode. And yeah. the other thing we noticed is this turbo uh, three cylinder, I almost said four cylinder, has got a lot of torque yeah. and it makes the front wheel spin coming out of corners oh, and yeah. a bit of torque steer. So it's really quite competent motor that actually makes a good sound. You would think a three cylinder turbo, it actually yeah. sounds pretty good. So it's this it's really kind of a compromise, I think, because the I, range I so. is so limited. Yeah. Now there's also auto e-mode. Oh, there's more. Oh, there's more. I'm just getting started here. Auto e-mode, which is the hybrid mode. So you've got the gas engine and the electric motor working together. And then there's also save the battery mode. So if you're getting low on the EV range, which, which is, is all the time, easy yeah. to do. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, and say you're on the highway, you can put it in that mode and it becomes a front wheel drive vehicle. Gas. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's a generator. Uh, that's generating and, electricity. Yes. And then when you get in the city, you can switch it back to EV mode if you want. And then there's e-boost. So you want some extra power, maximum power and torque on the highway, maybe when passing. You just push down on the gas pedal right to the floor and it will activate e-boost, but only if you have enough range and you have enough fuel in the car. If you've dropped under 10% in oh EV gosh. range, it is a no-go. I'm going to need a spreadsheet for <laughs> all of this. Like, listen, my idea with this is put it in auto and let the car figure it out. Obviously, yeah. I think uh, you're just trying to average down your fuel costs mm -hmm. over the year and you're plugging it in all the time. I would just let the car say, what's the most efficient way to drive it? But don't think when the battery is depleted from doing pure EV driving that it isn't working, okay? Mm -hmm. So then it's going to hybrid mode. It always keeps electricity in the battery to aid the gasoline engine for things like acceleration. Yeah. like you would expect with a typical hybrid. So even when you run out of that very low range, you're still using hybrid essentially. And every time that the vehicle shuts off, it reverts back to <laughs> auto mode. So if you have it in max e-drive and in green mode, and then you shut the vehicle off and yeah. you think you go back and it's still on that mode, it's not, yeah, you have you, to reset it. You don't even have to turn the vehicle off. This is the most frustrating thing. So is if you stop for any period of time, the car switches off yeah. basically, then you have to reset it. Then you've got to go in and configure all of those settings Andrew you just mentioned for mm -hmm. the drive that you're, in, you're, you're jonesing on at the moment. <laughs> um, we did this, we had it all set up this morning. We stopped and we got our coffee yeah. and the car was still on. Andrew was sitting here. I'm the one who runs in and gets the coffee because it's the right thing to do. And then Sometimes I Sometimes we walk down the street together. And hold hands. That's, that's so <laughs> romantic. And then uh, I get back in the car and I got to restart it again. Mm -hmm. And then we got to go through the whole thing again. Like it could be, listen, there could be an easier way to have this. It should just be pure EV hybrid or save it for later. I think that's what they need to it's have. It's not. You have to learn all of this if you're interested. Well, you now, can nerd out on it. That's the good sure. thing. For yeah. sure. Now let's get into the looks. I mean, does it not look great? It looks like a mini, Andrea. I love it. You know what? I, I always it. say there's two car brands I don't have to go to the auto show reveal. No. So when you're at the Frankfurt, Munich, Paris show, whatever, oh, we're going to unveil the new mini. I don't need to go. You know why? Because it's going to look like this. For the sure. other one is the 911. I don't need to go to the <laughs> unveiling of the 911. I know exactly what it's going to look but like. But he'd probably go to that one. Yeah, That's my that bet. One. So this comes standard with a body colored roof and body colored side view mirrors. It's got standard LED headlights and LED taillights with the Union Jack design on it, 18 inch wheels and run flat tires. Now you can also get a white roof, a black roof, a silver roof, as well as the body colored mirrors. You can really make this mini your own. You know, I joke about how you don't have to go to the reveal because you know it's going to look exactly like this. The mm -hmm. same thing on the interior. That's one of the problems with Mini, in my opinion, is they're handcuffed to this heritage look on everything. So how can they move away from that? Is, is, it, is every single Mini forever going to have this big eye staring at you? So Mini really is a sub-brand of BMW. You get a lot of BMW functionality in this, especially with a controller that's very similar to an iDrive unit. You don't get much in the base model in Canada. In the US, what I've noticed is for 2023, they've included the package in the base price. So when we get into our vital stats, you'll see that the US base price is a little bit more than the Canadian price. That's because we have a real stripped down version. There's not a lot in it. We went through it in key standard features. I highly recommend adding the Premier Plus package for $9,100 Canadian to get the panoramic sunroof, wireless charger, heated front seats, a heated steering wheel, power front seats, Apple CarPlay, a head-up display, and the Harman Kardon sound system. It is nice that it has a power passenger seat, yeah. no driver's seat memory over there. They finally added a heated steering wheel, finally, for 2022. All right, let's look at the back seat. Me getting in, you have to remember this is a subcompact crossover vehicle, but it does have a surprising amount of space. There's fairly good legroom for this class, good headroom, the armrest folds down, and the seats actually can uh, recline a little bit. They don't go back and forth, it's just the seat back goes back and forth. This has a, a little bit more space in the second row than the X1, which 
which is quite spacious for the subcompact category. And front row leg room is about the same between the X1 and this Mini. All right, there is no power lift gate on this. And I'm here to tell Mini, if you've had a power lift gate, you're gonna want another one. So not having this in here will just make people run to another brand. Like I would go and look at the BMW mm. um, if it's offered because it's available. So yeah. what's the space like in the back? So the X1 offers more space than this Countryman. I would say the cargo capacity behind the second row and overall cargo capacity is more like the Kona. And we didn't mention it yet, but this is based on the same platform that is shared with BMW mm -hmm. and the X1. Some good questions about this one. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Always wondered how expensive it is to maintain a Mini Cooper. A big hangover question for Mini is always reliability. Mm -hmm. So we're going to tackle that when we get into our hot topic. But right now you have some RepairPal numbers, which is the cost. Yeah, so RepairPal states that the average cost of a Mini is about $846 a year. And that includes regular scheduled maintenance and some unexpected costs. Other vehicles in the subcompact class are just over $450. So the Mini is coming in at double. Eh, it's more fun to drive. It is so fun. So you're going to get a subcompact bore or you're going to have fun in a Mini. There's some pretty really fun subcompact vehicles like the Kona. That's a really good one. Yeah, but that's a, yeah. But okay, now uh, to this, mm -hmm. uh, this is about really Mini generally, not mini, this. Not this specifically. This PHEV, yeah. I mean, this is such limited numbers, we'd have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. You can look more at BMW electrified vehicles generally to see how this does, but yeah. there you go. Like the X330e mm -hmm. uh, gets 29 kilometers With the of same, 17 miles just like this. Same abysmal range. Mm -hmm. Looks like Mini still does not have the standard safety features offered by most other manufacturers like blind spot monitor, lane keeping aid, cross traffic alert, collision avoidance. What are the stats, Andrea? No, it does not. It does not have blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. Uh, you know what? Blind spot monitoring, we have it in our car. I mm -hmm. never, ever, ever use blind spot monitoring. I like the cross traffic alert. When you're pulling out of yeah. a mall parking lot or something. It's always it nice goes, to beep, have. Beep, beep, beep. Someone even jam on the brakes. I've had that happen because I don't know what I was doing, but it jammed on the brakes. Uh, also, it doesn't have Android Auto in here. Only Apple CarPlay. What the hell? Look at I this know. beautiful Android phone. I know, it's crazy. No so, driver's seat memory. So BMW has Android Auto. So mm -hmm. why doesn't Mini? Those damn English. I'm sure it's coming. We always say that with Mini. It's got to come. Like we complained last time we did the Countryman, there was no heated steering wheel. They've added a heated steering wheel now. The it, other thing that's quite clever is this wireless charger in here. Um, it, it has this thing to make it bigger. And you know my what this phone fits, but Zach's doesn't fit. Yeah, I've got such a big monster beauty. Giant. Look at the size of that thing. But mine's the S22 and it fits, but anything bigger than my S22 and you're out of luck. Damn English. We put out a lot of content each week on the Motormouth YouTube channel and it's super easy to find. All you do is go to the YouTube search bar and type in Motormouth, the name of the channel, then the brand you're looking for. In this case, it would be Mini and all our reviews pop up. It's that easy. I never knew Mini made a PHEV. Very nice. Does this compete with mainstream or premium luxury vehicles? Mini does seem to produce a very nice high quality vehicle. Oh, what this do you is, think? This is premium for sure. This is not mainline pricing. Um, Mini is a sub-brand of BMW. They own, um, you know, I make fun about it being English, but really yeah. it's now German. <laughs> um, but uh, you know what? You kind of get that price point but not all the amenities no and you get the drive for sure this feels like a bmw uh, it's very engaging a lot of fun but yes you're missing a lot in here the non-luxury brands have more and i also wouldn't say that the interior is super upscale i mean i've been in some kias that have a nicer uh, interior but there yep. is there is a fair amount of soft material mm -hmm. some hard plastic below it's it's handcuffed because of the heritage of the brand. Mm -hmm. They have to go with this round screen and these toggle switches because that's the like when are they going to break free from that? They won't. It, it's it's this iconic look. What but they do need them. to do break free from is the instrument cluster. Yeah. I mean, this looks like something you bought at Best Buy yeah. and stuck it on the Someone dash. Someone said uh, one of our followers said IKEA. 
Ikea, Best Buy. Pick yeah. your poison. That's what it looks like. But I have to say, I like this screen. And as you switch from different drive modes, it lights up. I'm a real... You're a sucker I for am, marketing, Andrea. I am. Sucker I like for it. The... And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? How's the reliability? I have two friends that had minis and they both sold them after the lease was up. Well, there's some good news on this front. Reliability is improving at Mini. Mini has gone up the ratings uh, with JD Power anyway. Yeah. With JD Power, it now has an above average reliability score. The PHEV Countryman hasn't been rated yet, but the Countryman gets a reliability score of 82 out of 100. So it really depends who you talk to. Some people say, oh my gosh, I've owned a Mini and it really has had many problems. And others say, I've had no problems. So it's kind of a mixed bag, isn't it? It always comes back to my pain pleasure matrix. And there's two brands and they're both English. Yep. They both have a very high satisfaction rating when it comes to what they like about the vehicle. Yeah. So in this case with Mini, it's drivability. Mm -hmm. It's like a go-kart on wheels. It's so much fun. It's zippy. It's got good power, all that kind of stuff. And the other brand is Range Rover with great seating position and all that. But below average for many years yeah. with both brands in quality. People put up with it. Even the JD Power stats show that dealership experience and the drive and the enjoyment that the Mini offers is very high. It's like 89 out of 100. Yeah, people love mm -hmm. these cars. We have friends that have three, have had three now, yeah. three or four Minis. They just keep getting them because they love them so much. Yeah. So you probably want to know, what's the charging like on this? What is the official fuel economy and more in our vital stats? Let's start with pricing. The base trim starts at just under $45,000 Canadian and in the U.S. just over $46,000. Price has tested just over $55,000 Canadian. With a level 2 charger and a 7 kilowatt rate, it can charge 0 to 100% in an hour and 51 minutes. With a level 1 charger and a 2.3 kilowatt rate, it can charge from 0 to 100% in about 4 hours and 20 minutes. The Countryman plug-in hybrid qualifies for the federal EV rebate in Canada of $2,500 and incentives in participating provinces. In the U.S., it qualifies for a tax credit up to $5,002. Here's the fuel economy. This PHEV has a combined city and highway rating of 3.2 liters equivalent per 100 kilometers. That's 73 miles per gallon equivalent. When the battery is depleted, it gets 8 liters per 100 kilometers combined. That's 29 miles per gallon. Total range with gas and EV is 479 kilometers or 300 miles. The warranty is 4 years, 80,000 kilometers or 50,000 miles. In the United States, Mini offers three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improved. Well, this is a blast to drive. The EV system seems to be very well integrated. I wish they made the drive modes a little bit simpler to understand. And they gotta fix the range. They need way more range than just this. I think this is the most fun I've had with a plug-in hybrid, but the range is so low that it's out for me. I'll wait for the next gen. Thank you very much. This video is brought to you by Canada Drives. Shop online for your next used vehicle and enjoy the convenience of to-your-door delivery and the confidence of a seven-day love-it-or-return-it guarantee. Visit canadadrives.ca to learn more.